Hello friends, today we will talk about a disease and that disease is burnt of wheat. It is also known as cover smut or stinking smut. Why it is called cover smut or stinking smut? We will talk later. It occurs what white. It is more abundant in high moisture and low temperature region and losses are about 20 to 25 percent. In epidemic years, losses are about 60 to 70 percent. The pathogen is seed, soil and air burn. As you can see in the figure, the wheat kernels are not normal. Uh, inside of the wheat kernels uh, are in powdery mass. Types, there are three major types. Number one is common bunt. It is caused by pathogen Telesia caris and synonym is Telesia TTC and these bunts uh, have been differentiated based on the reticulation or markings on their special spore teleospores. If there are reticulation or markings on the teleospore walls that are caused by Telesia caris and in case of Telesia foetida uh, the teleospore wall is smooth wall uh, so, so this common bund causes few losses. And the other bund is uh, Dawab bunt. Dawab bunt is caused by pathogen uh, Tilisha controversa. It causes uh, several losses and it is quarantine pest. The symptoms and life, life cycle of uh, Tilisha TTC and Tilisha controversa are very similar and the difference in teleospore structures can distinguish them. Tilisha controversa teleospores cover with a conspicuous hyaline gelatinous sheet with a thickness of 1.5 to 5.5 micrometer. And the third bun is known as kernel bun. Uh, it is also known as new bun, partial bun, Indian bun of wheat. It is caused by pathogen Telesia indica. Uh, it has been reported from Pakistan, India, Mexico and southwestern states of USA. Mitra has reported this uh, kernel bun from the kernel in India in 1933. You can see different teleospores. Uh, the first in, in A and B, in this figure in A and B, there are markings on the teleospore walls and that are caused by Telesia caris and Telesia foetida and the C, there are no markings on the teleospore wall and uh, this teleospore belongs to Telesia foetida. And uh, this spore, these teleospores are the uh, spores of Telesia indica. So based on these spores, we differentiate the burnt pathogen. Now why this disease is called burnt? Because as a result of infection, septums of plant appear blackened because of their this appearance. The name of the class is derived from the term Ostulatus meaning burnt. The serial infecting Telesia species forms teleospores in the ores of their host defined as burnt fungi. It is also considered to be the origin of the word burn. So that is why this disease uh, is also known as burnt disease. The septums, the pathogen destroys the content of the kernels, they replaces them with the spores of the fungus and uh, stunting. They cause stunting and market losses, quality, discoloration, fall order and the uh, oily smudge spores are combustible. So as you can see in these figures, uh, the glooms have uh, spread out and, uh, and uh, the inside of the kernel is replaced by the spores. Now the other septums are infected plants few to several centimeters shorter than healthy plants and uh, several severe cases in case of severe cases may be half as tall like in case of dawa bun one fourth as tall as the healthy one other septums they cause other septums are plants increase in the number of tillers bluish green to grayish green in color burn septums appear when the plants head
Cats are slimmer bluish green rather than normal yellowish green. Glooms are spread, spread apart, forming a great angle with the main axis. Infected kernels are shorter and thicker and are grayish brown. You can see in this figure the infected kernels are shorter and grayish brown. Kernels are broken. They are full of sooty black powdery mass that gives of a distinctive odor resembling that of decaying fish because of the volatile compound trimethylamine in the spore mass. So you can see in these figures, kernels are broken down, they are full of sooty black mass. And the pathogens we have already discussed, three main pathogens are three main types uh, of the disease. We have already discussed common bund, dawab bund and the uh, last one was the kernel bund. We have discussed the, the, the pathogen of this disease, pathogens of this disease, yes. And uh, yeah, different pathogens produce different set of wall marking and the teleospores we have already discussed this. Now the disease cycle. In, in, the, in case of disease cycle, the mycelium is hyaline. Teleospores are brownish and spherical and are formed by the transformation of the dikaryotic mycelium. Some cells of the mycelium remain hyaline and sterile. When the teleospores germinate, they produce a basidium at the end of which 8 to 16 basidiospores also known as primary sporodia are produced in case of Telesia caris and Telesia fotida and 14 to 30 basidiospores are produced in case of Telesia contraversa and 32 to 128 basidiospores are produced in case of Telesia indica. So we can differentiate this pathogen based on basidiospores, based on number of basidiospores as well. Compatible primary sporodia fused to form H-shaped structure. So we, we, we will show this in, in a figure in a moment and the nucleus of each, each sporodium divides and through the exchange of one of the nuclei the two fused primary sporodia become dikaryotic. Primary sporodia uh, also known as basidiospores. The primary sporodia produce dikaryotic secondary sporodia on germination and uh, The secondary sporodia produce dikaryotic mycelium which can penetrate plants to cause infection. Yes, after systematic development through the plant, the mycelium again form teleospores in the kernels. So you can see in this in this figure, teleospore is overwintering or oversummering in soil, in seed, also airborne. So there are two different genetically nuclei in this teleospore. This has two, two different genetically, genetically different nuclei are there, so it is dikaryotic. So when it germinates, it forms basidium and at the end of basidium you can see the sporodia, haploid sporodia also known as basidiospores. Now these haploid uh, sporodia, they have one nucleus, they, the compatible sporodia fuse together also known as conjugate, they conjugate together, they form H structure. Now the mycelium become dikaryotic, this hyphae is also known as infectious hyphae, now it infects the wheat seedlings and inside the wheat seedlings it grows upward uh, upward it do a systematic infection in the wheat plant and it this mycelium invades the wheat head and inside the wheat head it become intercellular and this hyphae now convert into teleospore now it is infected head you can see and the wheat seeds or wheat kernels have been converted into bun ball now there is no wheat just bun balls and you can see this bun ball they are blackish decaying fish type of order is coming out from this bun ball inside these buns are actually teleospores and so the disease cycle is complete in this way Now disease transmission, these pathogens are the disease is transmitted through contaminated seed, infected soils and wire equipments. Now management, use of bun free seed, we should use bun free seeds, the seed should be free from the buns 
and we should also grow resistant varieties and we should treat the seeds with hexachlorobenzene, carboxene, thiram, chlorinyl, thiabendazole and benomyl as 2 gram per kilogram seeds. And the third management strategy is early sowing. When the temperature exceeds 15 degrees centigrade during autumn, we should grow wheat early. So by growing wheat early, we can deceive the pathogen. So this was all about the burn disease. Thank you for watching.